next important setup that we want to do is starting to build up the different levels of floors that we might have or anticipate within our building. Um, you might not know in the beginning how many stories that you actually have, but setting it up or making an assumption in the beginning is definitely helpful. So what we're going to do is either in the menu design and then story setting, which is also the shortcut um, command or control seven. Um, by the way, a little disclaimer, these kind of shortcuts, they might change depending on which um, local software that you're using. It's a little bit annoying. Um, I am used to completely different shortcuts. Um, but I'll show you a couple of tricks further down as well um, on how to change these sort of things and or where to look up these shortcuts. It's really helpful having uh, a little note at the end of these um, menus, menu tabs as well. So over time, you'll get used to them. And although there's so many shortcuts within Archicad, it gets really intuitive over time and you build up that muscle memory and it almost is like playing a piano and you just remember these shortcuts by itself. Another way to access, I'll just quickly open it here so you can see that that's one of the menus that's going to be opening there. Um, you can also find that menu somewhere else. Again, if you have a look at that navigator box here on the right hand side and we are working within the project map. So that's like basically the, the skeleton of our building. That's where we set up all the floors and all the um, kind of like the basic information is in here. So as you can see in, a, in the last video, we've named our project, we called it test project, and that's actually propagated in here automatically. Um, and we have some of the, the preset um, floors or levels that's already been made by Archicad. You can see down here as well, I've closed some of these tabs because they there is so much um, presets and information in there and it, it it is a bit overwhelming seeing all these sort of things. Once you know that you're not going to use them, you can always delete these sort of things um, or just collapse the menus so they are a bit out of sight, out of mind at the moment. And then all the way here on the bottom, we have settings. Um, pressing that button will bring us to the same menu that we have just seen before. So now we have ground floor and the first floor. Um, we might have a, um, a story below ground. So we can just click on insert below. As you can see, it creates a minus one. We can call that basement. There we go. And we normally have um, there's two different values that we can um, define. So one of them on our ground floor, it's the elevation is zero. So that's where our the origin is, where we calculate from. Um, and I would always um, start with that. That's that's your base reference, and we can define the height of that story. I have predefined that as three meters, which is Again, I'm working in centimeters, so that's going to be 300 centimeters, and then it'll automatically propagate the next level, starting at three at plus three meter from above ground, and then here the next story is predefined as 270 centimeter, which is 2.7 meters, um, and we can add another as many floors as we want. So we can just click on Insert above. It will generate a new line where it can call it second floor. Um, that number is automatically calculated. That's uh, the height added onto the elevation. So 3 plus 2.7 equals 5.7 meters. And that story again has the same height. We can insert another one. Let's assume that's our roof level so we don't have any more stories that number is automatically generated and the height. Here, of course, the height is not as relevant because it's, it might not be a full story. Um, you can probably just leave that number. And just as we have seen before, we, in, we did insert the basement, so a story below, um, and it, had, it, it propagated the same number. So it assumed that that story would have the same height as the one that we have kind of um, created it from, um, but probably 
I would assume the basement is not three meter high, so it might just only be 2.5 meters. So you can change either of these numbers. Um, I prefer to calculate it from here. So let's assume the basement is 2.5 meters below our um, 0, 0.0 base reference. And as you can see, it has adjusted that number here as well. So once we have that set up, we can just click on OK. And you can see here on the right hand side, it has created all these additional floors within our um, within our nav navigator, which is called the project map. So really, really um, nice how it's all automa automated. We can double click onto grant floor again. That's where we had all our information copied in. Um, I would assume that you're probably starting to draw one of your um, floor plans. And as with most buildings, they might have some, or hopefully, they do have some walls in common. So some of the walls that will go from the ground floor all the way to the second floor. And I think it's a really good idea to copy and paste these sort of things rather than um, drawing on top of them. And that's a really, really nice feature. So if you were to copy, I'm going to copy all of it. Of course, Command C or Control C. That's one of the universal um, shortcuts within most um, most programs. And I'm not deliberately zooming away from that selection, just to show you. Because if I double click onto the first floor, it automatically has the same level of zoom as we would have on ground floor. And I am now going to Command V, copy in the, um, the drawings that I've just um, copied from ground floor. And that window will pop up and you have two selections so it's it is asking you where to paste the information it could either be in the center of the current view and remember we have zoomed a little bit away from where we had that you know mock-up ground plan or you can paste it in in the original location which refers to the, the coordinates that are underlying to your um, cat file so of course because we we are copying the ground floor onto the first floor to kind of manipulate that level as well. We want to have it in the original location. And then that's really handy to have as well. It gives you the option of either to leave it at the current view, which I'm going to leave it for now, just for demonstration purposes. Or the second option is to zoom in on the elements that you're pasting onto the canvas. So we'll leave it like this, paste, there it is. So again, we can zoom back in here. And now we have the second floor. Let's just quickly add some, some more walls to kind of distinguish the two drawings. That is our first floor and ground floor. You can see the zoom stays. Um, here we don't have the walls on the first floor. We have those walls that we've just drawn. So that's a really, really um, good tool to have. Um, and every single time when you're copying something again and you're pasting it the next time, the selections that you've made the previous time in that kind of window, just, ah, of course now it doesn't show up because it's already within the frame, these selections will stay, um, they, they don't just go to a default but they stay as they are, so if you want to do the same action multiple times, you don't have to select these all the times. Okay, so that's it with um, setting up the stories within your building. You can always change them. It is really important um, to kind of double check these sort of things once in, a, once in a while and to set them up properly in the beginning. Again, you can always revisit them. Um, one of the big advantages is if you are drawing with 3D walls su such as these and if you press on these walls you go into the tool settings where you have a bit more information if that's a wall that's going from the ground floor all the way up to the first story like a, a room height wall rather than defining the actual height of that element you can just let it know that it, it's starting we can see that down here on the first floor and it will end 
on the second floor. So that's the story where your element is visible, where it's located at plus one. So the story above. You can even you can even make it double the height. Um, you can select that if that is crucial for your project. But let's just assume it's one story high, and then it automatically calculates the height of your wall. Um, especially for exterior walls, that's really really helpful. Because if you are changing your project, your, your room height, your floor height throughout the design process, you can do that in that um, in those overall settings and you don't have to change every single wall individually. So very, very helpful. So yes, that was already pre-assigned. Okay, we are happy with all of that. And let's assume maybe that wall here is just a... Um, it's a railing, it's not like a, a full height wall. Again, we can go into that menu, but having that wall selected, and then we can unlink it. So we're choosing that um, drop down menu here as well, not linked, and that option will disappear. And now you have um, the opportunity to um, manually define the height of that wall. So let's assume if it is a railing. It'll probably be around one meter high. Again, in centimeters, that'll be a hundred. Um, and pressing OK, and that changes it. We can't see that much, but if we were to select um, our drawing and we press Command Three, oh, of course, it's it's a different um, a different shortcut in a different country. I'm not used to that. <laughs> I'm just quickly um, going to find the, um, there it is, the 3D window. Um, yes, very badly drawn. I didn't set it up properly. But you can see the wall that we just were drawing here is much, much smaller than the other one. Very odd um, ground plan because I didn't set it up like with the proper measurements. It literally just a shape that I've been drawing. But yes, you'll get the point here. And we will go through um, drawing walls and how to set all these things up in a bit more detail in a different video. Thank you very much.